I have never had such pain. Well, I keep telling you, Nick, why don't you go in the dentist and have him yank it out? Well, maybe it don't have to be yanked. Well, then what's it ache for? Well, this bad weather always sits in that bad tooth. Well, now, look, we're here. It won't take but a minute to go in and have it yanked out. Toothache medicine. the same. How's it feel? Mm. Well, now that the whiskey's got it numb, won't you go have it yanked? You won't feel a thing. <laughs> yeah, you gentlemen look in the prime of life and physical fortitude. Now, how'd you like to earn an easy five dollars? Doing what? Practicing the manly art of self-defense. Test your strength and prove your skill. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, the Boston Terriers. Hey. Which one are you? Well, me neither. Terrence O'Rafferty, manager and trainer of Jack Kilbane, who once stepped into the ring with the immortal John L. Sullivan. Really? Yes, gents. The fight of the century, sponsored by the Stockton Club at $50 a ticket. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, bare knuckle, fight to the finish. Oh, it'll be the biggest private boxing match ever held west of the Mississippi. Marcus the Queen Barry Rose, that's no gouging or biting or yeah. kicking, eh? Hey? Now, are there any men among you that would like to earn five dollars as a sparring partner? And the first man that stays three rounds with Jack Kilbane wins this here gold piece, eh? Hey? Oh, now, surely there must be some among you that have done some fighting. You can't all be lacking in the qualities of manhood. There you go, Nick. You get your tooth knocked out, earn five dollars, and save a trip to the dentist. <coughs> Heath, when are you going to learn you're not funny? Oh, he talks. And, and I thought your friend was deep and dumb. No. <laughs> Give me another shot. How about that, Nick Barkley? You're always stomping and throwing your weight around. Well, now, why don't you mind your own business, Jonas? You just happen to be a little bit sore because I fired you off the ranch. Will I do the same thing again if I ever see you put a club to a horse? And don't you ever forget it. Ooh. Now, here's the man offering you a fight. How about it? Oh. <laughs> it, 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 it. <laughs> Didn't want to start no arguments. If Stockton doesn't have a man to go three rounds with Jack Kilbane, I'll just keep me gold piece. <laughs> we'll send to Sacramento. For some men. Well, I guess it's up to me, Nick. Where'd I sign up? What, what do you want to do that for? What do you want to fight for? I used to box on the army. What do you get for it? You get your brains knocked in while some Yahoo watches. Well, it might be a shame to turn the man down. People might think there ain't no pride here in Stockton. Pride? Besides the ideal of a Barkley knocking out the great Jack Kilbane, that kind of tickles me. Right here? Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Anybody who's going to fight in this family, it's going to be me, Nick Barkley. Oh, fine, fine. I'll see you at Brown's Warehouse in 20 minutes. It's gone.
Nick, I was just having fun. I tricked you into this. Now, let's get out of here. I signed up. Well, they can get somebody else. That guy's nobody to fool with. There we go. There we go. Easy. Ah. Well, uh, thank you very much, my friend. But I'm afraid you don't win the five dollars. It's three rounds you got to stay. Three. <laughs> That's what. All right, Mr. Barkley, you're next. Now, let, let's see what you can do. Well, uh, he hits pretty hard. I may not be able to be much competition. You wouldn't be trying to back out on me now, would you? I mean, uh, no, no, no. Nick, you don't have to prove anything. Use your head. Can't use my head. Marcus of Queensbury rules you can't butt a man. Can't use my head. Jack Kilbane. Uh, Nick. Nick Barkley. There's my brother Heath. Heath Barkley. Mr. Rafferty, you, you met Heath. Have you ever fight before? Uh, me? Uh, no, well, just uh, army tournament stuff, nothing too much. Hey, mister, hmm? I'd like you to try to box Jack. Yeah. Make a move at you. Yeah. No, no, don't be trying to take him out with one punch. Oh, no, no. Oh, that way you may last a few rounds, right. eh? Right. Now, Jack, I'd like you to move around a bit. Hold up on a punch. Make it last a little while. Yeah, you know, sharpen up your timing. You need it, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty good punching, cowboy. I get even better. Nick! Nick, that's enough! Now you're gonna come to me. You better get the seat of your pants ready then, cowboy, because you're gonna be sitting down. Come on. Now, isn't that enough? You stay out of this, Heath. Uh, uh. Oh, Kilbane. I'm gonna get you with one of these if it's the last thing I do. Next, cowboy? No, thanks. Rafferty, I've had it for one day. I think I've had plenty. I don't know about you. Respect for Stockton Cowboys, I feel bad. Now take it easy. It, it was a fluke. I knew this would happen. I knew it. Those two fights with Sam Driscoll. Got pounded bad. Get, get out of the way, will you? No, no, take it easy, Jack. Just take it easy. Here we go. I, I gotta finish the fight. He sent you over a lucky one. No, 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 no. I quit. Besides, you you had me out of my feet. No, don't worry about me, cowboy. Just hit my bad side. Turn out the lights for a minute. It'll go away. I don't want to intrude in your business, mister, but I think he better be checked by a doctor. Right. Me? Yeah, you. I've been fighting since I was 15 years old. Oh, watch it. Hey. Yeah. Now, we're going down to see Dr. Marar. He's just down the street. Now, I don't want any nose. Okay. Now, Mahit, you get back to the ranch. I'll be there as soon as I see if he's all right. Right. Doc, I tell you, I can see as good as anything. Oh, well, you just quiet down, stop arguing. Now, follow my hand with your eyes. No, 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 don't. Don't move your head. Oh. 
How much has he been hit on that side? Who knows? Jack's had over a hundred fights. Could always take a punch. No, I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know, Rafferty? I'm thinking of Sam Driscoll. He could hurt you bad. He never saw the day. Now, let me explain what has happened. A blood clot is very probably formed and is causing pressure there inside your head. Well, how come I feel okay, then? Listen, I could go out there right now and... Shut uh, up! Who's the doctor here, him or you? I know how I feel. If it's a blood clot, there's every chance it'll go away and you'll be as good as ever. But I'm telling you this. If you ever fight and get hit there, that blood clot can move, not dissolve. And you'll be dead. How do you know? Can you see inside my head? No, Mr. Kilbane, I can't. But I know something about concussion. We'll cancel the fight. Cancel a fight? After I put up the guarantee, every red cent I've got. Jack, it makes no difference. You've got to quit now, right now. Shut up, Rafferty. Quit talking like an old lady. There's a man in San Francisco who knows more about these concussions. Get him. Oh, wait a minute. I got no money to pay for any doctor from San Francisco. I'll pay for it. Get him. In a pig's eye, you will. I pay my own bills. Now, get out of the way. Jack, you've got to listen. Look, I know we're broke, but quitting's better than putting your life on the line. Think of Maddie and Johnny. I'm fighting Sam Driscoll. And you're fighting him alone. I'm taking the next train back to New York. I'll have no part of you getting yourself killed. Okay, Rafferty. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go walk out on me. I, I don't need you. But you're looking at the picture of your pa in there, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> Is he in? Pop's sleeping. He's oh. in training right now. And... Hello. Oh. I'm Mrs. Kilbane. Oh, Mrs. Kilbane. Well, may I speak to you a minute, please? Uh, I'm Nick Barkley. I'm the man responsible for your husband being hurt this afternoon. Hurt? Yes. He didn't tell me anything. Oh, I, I see. Well, uh, well... Uh, well, won't you come in? Yeah. Johnny, I, I want you to take this downstairs and get a newspaper for your father for when he wakes up. All right, well. well where was he hurt? In the left-hand side of his head, where Driscoll hit him before. The doctor says if he fights again, well... Well, he could be hurt pretty badly. Oh, dear God. Well, you've got to make him quit. And if you're worried about the guarantee money you put up, there is a way of getting that back, you know. I, my brother's a lawyer, and... I'm not looking for a lawyer, mister. Well, the doctor said you're in no condition to fight. I'm in good enough condition to throw you out of that window. Now get out of here. Jack, honey, you didn't tell me anything about getting hurt. If a doctor told you to quit, then not. Mary, I... Mary, since we're talking over family business in front of strangers, I'll make you a promise. After I beat Driscoll, I'll quit. Now, you can put Johnny in school like you wanted to, and we'll settle down. But don't ask me to cancel this fight. Now, what good is that going to do if what the doctor says is true, and you get killed? I've had over 140 fights. Nobody's killed me yet. And one lousy punch almost did it today, and it was my lousy punch. And I don't happen to like that. Well, what do you want me to do, crawl on my belly? Ask her brother for a job at a saloon tending bar? You seem to be more worried about yourself and your wife and your son. You take on a lot of nerve, cowboy. Just because you landed one lucky punch. All right. All right. Well, you take a job. That is, if you're not afraid of work. Jack, listen to him, please. We got an empty house on the ranch. You can live there and earn a very decent wage. Oh, I'm not a ranch hand. Well, at least take it until you decide. You don't have to give up anything. You can go on training. Now, ranch work is the greatest builder in the world. 
Keep it really in shape. Jack, please. If you want to give it up later, you can. Go back to what you want to do. You can go back to fighting. But give it a try. Hi, Pa. I brought you the paper. Say, you ought to hear all the people in town talking about you. The way you fought Sailor Haggerty and Sullivan and... I'll, uh... I'll be expecting you, huh? Ma'am? What's going on, Pa? Well, we're going to go live on a ranch for a while, so... Step up on your horse. We gotta pull some cattle out of the hills. All right? All right. Uh, Kilbane. Uh, Kilbane. Uh, Kilbane. Uh, Kilbane. Uh, you might have a little more luck if you try the other side here. Uh, this side over here. Oh. The, the, the rain. Ooh. 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 Jack, wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Wait a minute. I'll give your horse to Hank here. Let him put him up. You go on over to the blacksmith shop. See if he needs some help. I think he does. All right? Uh, right over there. Did you ever shoe a horse? <clears throat> well, I uh, can't say I have. <clears throat> There's nothing to it. Tell you what, take this and clean the hoof off and get it ready for trim. Tap him behind the leg. He'll lift it. Hey, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. But next time, I may tap him on the nose. Uh, you stand still, Plaster. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Jack, I should have told you you have to hobble a cow before you milk her. Well, I'm not a milkmaid, Nick Barkley, nor a farmhand. I'm a fighter. No, 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 wait a minute. There's no reason to get upset. Cows are like some fighters, you know. You gotta outwit them. Now, you're not gonna let a cow beat Jack Kildane, now, are you? Not without a good fight. Oh, hello, Mrs. Barkley. 
Henry, Mr. Kilbane. Hardly. I hope your family likes pears. Our trees were loaded this year. Do you know we put up almost a hundred quarts? Oh, that's very kind of you, but I don't have any fruit jars. Let me bring you some. Oh, thank you. We don't need it, Mrs. Barkley. I mean, you've made one small mistake. We're not charity cases. Jack, please. Well, I mean, living in this house rent-free is bad enough, but if it's, if it's pears Mary's after, she can wait till after the fight and buy them. Oh, Mr. Kilbane, you don't understand what neighbors mean to each other and what they do for each other in this part of the country, but perhaps you haven't lived out here long enough. Mrs. Barkley, everything my family owns, I earned with ease. I don't owe anybody anything, and I've never taken any handouts. And I'm not about to change. I'm sorry if I offended you. Mary? Mrs. Barkley, thank you. Jack, how can you be so bullheaded? You better sit down and eat your breakfast, son. Uh, you too. You're not going to grow if you don't eat. You're not sick, are you? Johnny? What's the matter with you? Pop, how come you hang around here doing ranch work? Are you going to quit the fight? <laughs> Johnny, that's... Where'd you get such a notion? I rode in town with Mr. Barkley, and some of the people were talking. They said you were going to. Oh, you're all mixed up, son. Well, that's the silliest story I ever heard. Me quit? <laughs> Jack, if you don't tell him, I will. Tell him what? About the doctor. What doctor, Pop? Mary, you don't know what you're talking about. Jack, the doctor said... Mary, he wasn't serious. Only a woman wouldn't know he was joking. Pop, is there something wrong? Oh, no, no, no. The doctor said something about my head, but he was kidding. As a matter of fact, I'm in such good shape, he was going to put a bet on me himself. Now, you eat your breakfast. Well, I, uh, I guess I better be getting to work. You're lying to Johnny, to me, to yourself. Mary, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with me. Jack, is that the truth? Oh, Jack, don't be wrong. Please. Oh, please don't be wrong. a job loading wagons. What are they paying you? Two bits a day? <laughs> <laughs> Sweeping out barns and milking cows. Finally found your proper calling, eh, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you still got the same big mouth, haven't you, Driscoll? 
Hey, I hear you're backing out of the fight. Puts them out of you. Scared? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, those jobs are so hard to find. Maybe I can put a word in for you. Sweeping out saloons. <laughs> <laughs> we can put your kid out in the street dancing for pennies. <laughs> Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! There's no money in street fighting. Well, what about it, Kilbane? You're gonna back out? All right, Jack. Come on, I just want to get you riled up now. Come on. Well, that's where you were wrong, Driscoll. You're gonna get all the fights you can stomach. Where's Flaherty, his manager? He had to leave town. <laughs> Come on, everybody. The drinks are on me. Let him go. Come on, come on. Oh, we better get our stuff. We're gonna be moving back into town. We got a lot of training to do. fork. Matter of fact, you can't see anything from that side now, can you? Get out of here with your tricks, will you? I got a fight to train for. Jack, if there was a chance to get out of this, would you take it? Not a what? Don't play dumb with me. You're not in this thing to win. You're in this to get your guarantee money back. Because you don't have the train fare to send your wife and boy back to New York. I'm fighting because I'm a fighter. All right. If there was a chance to get that guarantee money back, would you take it? Driscoll would see me dead before he'd give me a nickel. Huh? Well, what about widow's money for Mary, in case that uh, blood clot all of a sudden decides to break loose? Get out of here. You, you got nothing to say to me. All right, all right. One way to get that guarantee money back is that someone shows up in that ring, right? Yeah, that's right. All right. I'll fight Sam Driscoll. You? Yeah, me. You don't belong in the same ring with him, cowboy. More than you do. You still got that blind side. Well, just don't worry about me, huh? Come on, come on, get in the buggy, son. Jack, why don't you stay here and train? We can fix up a little place in the barn. Besides, your wife Mary and your son here, they like the house pretty well, don't they? Keep your favors and get out of my way. Now, now, wait a minute. You need a manager, you need someone to train with, and I'll do it for Rafferty's 10%, all right? You? A uh, fight manager? Mm-hmm. Oh, now, come on. I've, I've followed the fight game since I was, well, as small as this one here. And, uh... Well, besides, where else could you find such a great sparring partner, huh? Huh? Well? yourself up. No, that's fine with me. Soak your hands in salt water? Yeah, Brian, thick enough to pickle a hog. 
One split knuckle would be the end of it, you know. Yeah, don't worry about that. All right, start punching this bag. Make believe it's Driscoll. Keep punching till I tell you to quit. Go ahead. Want a break, stranger? Yeah, I'll break. Never thought we'd be going out of the ranching business, did you, Heath? You lose a good foreman, things are bound to go right downhill. I mean, like if he gets interested in other things so that the South Pasture well doesn't get dug out and the busted fencing stays busted. Yeah. Nine and 15. Very sloppy, but effective. Funny a man raised on a ranch suddenly loses interest in it. Yeah, you'd think managing a ranch would be enough managing for any man. Very funny, boys. So I'm going into the prize fight business. Well, now, don't you think for one minute that I can't handle this ranch, too? And I wouldn't worry too much about Kilbane, either. His doctor is getting him an instrument that uh, can tell whether the blood clot is still there. Nick, we're not worried about the ranch or Kilbane. We're worried about you, Nick. Maybe you're getting in too deep. And if something happens to Kilbane, you're going to blame yourself. Anyway, all we're trying to tell you is that no matter how deep you get, we're in it with you all the way. Well, now, why didn't you say that before? We just did. Step aside. <laughs> Jack. What were you doing? Uh, uh, reflexes, sir. Uh, I was seeing if I was uh, dropping my shoulder or carrying my chin too high. Well, why were you moving your hand in front of your face? Well, I told you, Mary, reflexes. Is that all? Uh, honey, Nick's waiting to take me to the Jack, fight. I don't want you to fight Driscoll. Mary, I told you, it's for you and Johnny. It's the last time. I don't want you taking chances with your life. You tell Nick to call the fight off. Don't ask that. I am asking it. And if you don't, I'm going to take Johnny and go to my sister's in Sacramento. Mary, I... I, I mean it. Mary, I haven't got time to argue. But, but you'll see. I'll take Driscoll inside of five rounds. Jack, you know I love you. Then you'll stay? No. <laughs> He should be back pretty soon. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine. Well, you couldn't be sharper than right now. Just remember, keep that left up. Protect that blind spot, huh? Well, I won't forget. Tell me something. How smart would you say Driscoll was? Driscoll? Mm-hmm. Well, he's dumber than I am. How do you mean? he kick his grandmother upstairs. <laughs> well, now, if he thought you had a cut, a bruise, or a weak spot, would he go after it? Like a shark smelling blood. Huh. Now, uh, where do you think you could take a pounding the best? The rib cage, huh? All right, now let's just give him a target. I got some stuff in the barn I use for horses that'll raise the most convincing black and blue mark you ever saw. You're a smart cowboy. You might even make a fight manager. <laughs> Be right back. Big day, huh? Yeah. How's the guy? 
Oh, I'll be carrying my left hand high. He won't land on No, me. no. You're going to protect those ribs. You show him you're scared of that left side, and he's going to pound you there all day. Now, Jack was telling me that uh, Driscoll is like a shark. So we figured we'd give him a little bait. <laughs> was this part of the strategy? Uh-huh. Come on, I'll tell you about it on the way. <laughs> Me. Come in. I was just about to have some coffee. Oh, no, thank you. You see, I, I just came to say goodbye. Johnny and I are leaving for Sacramento on the 9 o'clock train. You're leaving before the fight? Oh, uh, yes. Well, can you tell me what's happened? Well, I, I have a sister who lives in Sacramento. Oh, I've been promising to see her. Well, show Johnny off. Oh, she's never seen Johnny. He, he was born in New York. All right, that's not true. I'm leaving Jack. He thinks more of fighting than he does of Johnny and me. Oh, no, Mary, that's not true. It is. Mrs. Barkley, I can't take it anymore. Fighting means more to him than his own life. And I am no good at waiting. Waiting for one good punch from Sam Driscoll or some other fighter. I want to be far away. Well, Mary, distance isn't going to put you far away from him. Why don't you wait until after the fight and have a talk with him and then... No, I've talked. He's made his decision and I've made mine. Mary, it... No, please, Mrs. Barkley. the train station. Looks like she got sense enough to leave a loser. All right, Ben, come to the center. Kill Ben. You've got an injury. There'll be no contest, no fight, and all bets off. Looks much worse than it is. Come on, let's go. What are you trying to do, back out, Kill Bane? Just watch me. Let's take a look. Said it's all right. Come on, let's go. Well, all right. You fellas know the rules of ever boxing in this country. I want a good, honest, clean fight. I want no gouging in the eyes, no butting with the head, and no blows beneath the belt line. Any questions? Yeah, he fouled me in Tona Poor Nevada. You gonna watch that? Anyone commits a foul, she'll be disqualified and the purse will be forfeited. Now shake hands, go back to your corners. When the bell rings, come out fighting. Don't try to make any false claims on me. Hey. Hey. Contest is scheduled for 25 three minute rounds and one minute rest periods. Under the Marquis of Queensby rules, introducing in this corner Jack Kilbane and his opponent Sam Driscoll.
Those ribs. Keep him low. No, no, no. That's where he wants it. Get him in the left side of the head. The left side. Got it? I'm throwing in the towel. thinks what he needs. To get himself killed, is that what he needs? He'll be dead, and for no other reason than his stubborn pride. Well, what would you do, Mrs. Barkley? I don't know. I don't know if I'd act any different. I just don't know. But I think it's wrong. You see, Mary, if you take away a man's pride, he might as well be dead. Your place is with him, Mary, no matter what. Jack, listen to me. Every time he throws a right at your blind side, he tips it. He steps out and back with his right foot. Now, Heath and I will tell you when to throw your right, because we'll see it coming. All right, now. When we say now, you step back and let go with the right. You got that now. Have you got it? Sure, do you understand that we say, now, you step back and let go with the right. Your fighter's got to answer the bell, mister, do you hear me? Remember that. Now, step back, let go with the right. Go on. Hey! Come on, I'll give you a bite of these. Hey, 
glad you came back, Mary. If you hadn't, it all would have meant nothing. Oh, I could never leave you, Jack. Johnny and I will always be with you. You know, I've been thinking. As long as a man has some brains left, he ought to be able to use them for something else besides a target. You don't mind if I don't go on a fight for the championship, do you? No. Oh, Jack. I guess I'm just bullheaded, honey. But it was a decision I had to make myself. Well, they've got me some money now. I guess I'll try something else. What, Pop? I don't know. But we'll do all right, son. You ever think about being a farmer? Farmer? Uh-huh. Put about half of that stubbornness of yours into being a farmer, and you might wind up being a very prosperous man. Say, isn't that place down by Frenchman's Creek still available? Sure is. And from what they're asking, it could be quite a bargain. Well, maybe you got something there, cowboy. See you later. See you, gentlemen. Tooth again. Oh. Come on, I'll buy you a beer. Whiskey. <laughs> oh. Sky pilots turn up every spring. That's a nice boy. Yeah. How long will you be? Oh, not long. I'm just going to Ivy Mills for a dress fitting. Do you have any money? How much? Five dollars. Five dollars? How do you keep that awful thing? Well, that? That's for good luck. Ever since I've been carrying that, I haven't been bitten by a single rattlesnake. you looked in your neighbor's eye and said, 
I love you, brother. And when was the last time you raised your eyes and said, I aim to see those pearly gates and sit on that golden throne? When was that? Two months ago? Six months ago? A year? Oh, I see we have our work cut out for us in this sin-filled town. Revival meeting. Tomorrow night, Swanson's Grove, 7.30. You tell your neighbors. 7.30 tomorrow night. Here you are, sister. You won't regret it. Come on out there with your friends. Tell your neighbors, 7.30, Swanson's Grove. There you are, brother. Well, now, what do we got here? My brother here is a deaf mute. I'm lame. We heard about your miracles. Uh, heal us, brother love. Drive out our devils, wash us clean. Well, now, my sons, I can't cure you all by myself. It'll take the combined prayers of all your good neighbors here, but I guarantee you, you come to my meeting tomorrow night and you'll leave walking, and he'll leave singing joyous hosannas. Hallelujah, brothers. Hallelujah, brother. Young lady. Oh, your piety and serenity falls fair upon my eyes. I'd like to offer you a special invitation. Sister... Audra Barclay. Yes. I'm Brother Love. I've heard about your family. They're quite prominent in these parts. You could lend an awful lot to our crusade, Sister Audra. Well, I... Uh... 7.30 tomorrow night, Swanson's Grove. Hallelujah, Sister. Remarkable. Remarkable. Come on, Audra. Let's go and try your dress on. Howdy, fellas. You were due in yesterday. What held you up? A convert, brother, a convert. Soft she was, like a mouse's ear. <laughs> Old Levace here's been limping and gawking around here for two days. Set you up pretty good. You figuring on getting your foot caught with another convert? I saw you talking up a pretty young one over there. Now, look, fellas, by ourselves, we could hit this town for about $15 and a dozen eggs. Now, we get the right people behind us, and we can get fat. Now, that girl I was talking to was Audra Barkley, the richest family in the valley. And we need their support. And I intend to get it. With the girl. Have I missed one yet? Hallelujah, brothers. Hallelujah. Cleave under the word. Remember the lilies of the valley, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah. Build buildings, I build souls. 7.30 tomorrow night, Swanson Scrooge. See you there, brother. Hallelujah. So this is what it looks like. Lucifer's lair. Satan's sanctum sanctorum. And all you poor unfortunates who abide herein. You come to Beelzebub's banquet hall to seek forgetfulness in the waters of Lethe. For shame. And you. 
You swill Belial's bills drained from the blackest slough on the river Styx. Now, I suppose you come to the altar of the Archfiend because you were cast such a poor lot. Well, when was the last time you asked him for a better one, brother? I wouldn't do that. Hallelujah, brother. And what have we here? The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with precious and golden gems. And in her hand, she had a golden cup full of abomination. Why? For love? No, no, no. It's the devil's arms you'll find. Love. 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 What's a man without love? I'll tell you. 200 pounds of meat walking around. As much meat as in a yearling, a big buck. Same amount of meat as in four big dogs or ten little ones. Same amount of meat as in 100 rabbits or 200 sleek fat rats. That's what a man is without love, doomed to eternal damnation. And that goes for gossipers, coveters, actors, and people who dance on Sunday. Jack of clubs. Jack of diamonds. Jack of hearts. Jack of spades. You notice, brothers? Not one of them will look you straight in the eye. Could you look a man straight in the eye? If you were condemning his immortal soul to the eternal fires, Hallelujah, brothers. Meeting tomorrow night. Swanson's Grove, 7.30. Bring your faith with you. Give my best to the family. I will. You can count on that dress being ready by Thursday. Or would you want it in time to wave Swanson's Grove? Thursday will be fine. Don't you believe brother love can heal people? Oh, I believe in miracles, but I'm not sure Brother Love is the one to perform them. I suppose not. Mother. Over here, dear. I just wanted to tell Audra goodbye. Goodbye, darling. When will we see you again? I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Come on, dear. Let's, let's go inside. Sister, may I help you with those, please? Thank you. They're really no time. No, no, no. Please, please. Which way are you going? Toward the saloon. Sister Audra. My buggy's parked out front, Brother Lutz. Well, I should have known that. Sister Audra. I sincerely hope that you and your fine family will attend our meeting tomorrow night. You see, it's very, it's very important to me. Very important to you? Well, yes. You see, if, uh, if people of quality attend, it has a very positive effect on the less materially fortunate. Well, I'll mention it to my family. Well, may I mention it myself? Certainly. My brother's right behind you. Excuse me, brother. Yes, I think we've had the pleasure before. I was just telling your lovely sister that I was looking forward to meeting your fine family tomorrow morning. Hallelujah, brother. I didn't invite him. Hallelujah, sister. But you must understand, Mr. Love, we have our own faiths. I don't proselyte constituents, Mrs. Barclay. I merely steal souls from the devil. In place of worship, I deliver them to his immaterial. You have no church. I have no edifice, but I have a church. You see, there's so much evil in the world that I, uh, well, I, I feel it would be unfair for me to stay in just one place. For tea. Uh, no, 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 thank you. Oh, there have been some amazing healings at some of my meetings, Mrs. Barclay. I sincerely hope you'll come and witness the power of prayer in action. The power of prayer. 
Oh, yes, only recently I was accosted by, by two poor souls, one a lame and one a mute, and tonight at the meeting I'm going to heal them. Oh, it's happened on more than one occasion, and it's a sight to see. Can I count on you? I'm afraid that would be impossible. Oh. Well, then it's a pity. I, I, I was kind of looking forward to seeing Sister Audra this morning. Is she here? No, this is her day at the orphanage. She asked me to extend her apologies. Well, how like Sister Audra to be involved in good works. Did I pass that on the way down here? Was that near the old mill? Mm-hmm, that's it. Mother, I'm ready to go. I got the buggy all set. Say, whose horse is that out there? Uh, this is my son, Nick. Nick, this is Brother Love. Brother Love? Just a man of the cloth, bringing his bright word to the benighted territory. Uh-huh. Is that your horse, Asai? Yes, the black one. I noticed a rifle in the saddle scabbard. Uh, Brother, I fight the devil with any means at hand. I see. I think I came at a bad time. I'll see my own way out. Uh, Mrs. Barkley? What time did you say Sister Audra left for the orphanage? About 20 minutes ago. Oh, good, good. Then maybe I'll pass her on the way back. Uh, Vaya can be your sister. Brother? Well, now, what did he want? The sustenance of the Barclay prayers. I think. what I'd call a pretty fast team. When somebody shoots at them. Oh, probably some kids in a lark up in the hills. Well, thank you for helping me. Well, after you stood me up, I should let you keep right on going. You really didn't give me much of a chance to explain yesterday. Anyway, I, I appreciate what you just did. Well, I'm happy to be of service. Perhaps I, can, uh, perhaps I can see you to your destination. Oh, that won't be necessary. I'm just going to the orphanage. Once a week, the members of my group take two children on a picnic. And I never thought of orphans as being lucky. Well, you're welcome to join us. Uh, there's plenty of food here. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean to suggest it. Well, really, I made more than enough. Anyway, it's the least I can do to repay you. Sister Audra, sweetness sits on your shoulders like a silken scarf. I'll get my horse. I'll follow behind you. Eat. Yeah, I don't care if I don't eat for a week. He says he's full, but he's got four pieces of chicken in his pocket. Those box in the trash, you would too. Now, you both know you get plenty to eat at the orphanage. Mr. Audra, you're spoiling the game. I'll tell you what. First one to find me a bird's nest with an egg in it gets a brand new shiny dime. Now, how's that? Great! Great. Neatly done, brother. Well, after a hearty meal, it helps the system to work off a little energy. Like you're doing? <laughs> you see, the nice thing about giving advice is that no one is bound to take it, especially me. You said I was spoiling their game. Sister Audra, in an orphanage, everyone has exactly the same thing as everyone else. And it's very important to have one more thing, something special. I had a clock. It didn't work, but nobody else had one. You were raised in an orphanage? Kansas City. 
They found me in the front stoop in an apple crate with a great big sign over my chest that said, Love. They didn't know it was a name or a request, so they... They called me Benevolent Love. Ben, for short. That's a lovely story. <laughs> Before I got the call, it'd take a water tank full of the blood of the lamb to cleanse these roads. I've sinned far more than I can ever make up for, but... I figure the inferno might not be quite so hot if I can keep a few people from going there. Never told anybody that before. I don't know why I told you. I guess it's just been on my mind for so long. Well, I better get going. Wait. That was something more easily left unsaid. I, I admire you for bringing it up. Well, then you forgive me, sister. I don't think I'm... Well, you come to my meeting tonight and you'll see how I make up for it. You will be there, won't you? I'll be there. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, with Adrian being blind, I can't afford to pass up a chance. and cockfights, and I've heard more enthusiasm for a grizzly and a Rhode Island red. <laughs> now, that's more like it. My brothers, sisters, look down on the ground around you. You see a rock there? Pick it up. I don't care how big it is, just you pick it up. Everybody got a rock? I'm a sinner. I am a black-hearted, hateful, sinning breaker of the commandments, and I deserve to be lapidated. I deserve to be stoned to death, and I carry out for it. So now you throw those rocks at the sinner and let him who is without sin cast the first stone. No stones. Not one stone. Well, we all know what we are. And now I'm going to tell you what we're going to do about it. And he who does not pledge himself will sweat in limbo, singe in purgatory, and burn forever in the fires of Hades with nothing to slake his thirst save the abomination of the river Styx. Amen. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it, flock. Oh, the best is yet to come. Now let the blind and the cursed and the lame and the halt come forward. This is the time to come forth and be cleansed. I will get you ten. There's a cure coming. How has 
evil made itself manifest in you, brother. I'm lame. My brother's mute. Heal me. Please, heal me. Do you believe you can be healed, brother? I believe. I believe. Brothers, sisters, give this man your love. Give this man your hearts, your prayers, your faith. You feel it, brother? Is it there? It is, brother. It is. Walk tall, brother. Walk tall and straight. Walk. <laughs> You can. Now throw away those supports. I can't. I can't. I can't. You can. You can. You can. Walk. Walk. a leg that's never been off the ground. I dragged it in back of me for 18 years like a, like a snake's tail. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I'm in your service for the rest of my life. Now, heal my brother Flood, brother love. Please heal him. Deaf and mute all the days of his life. Where is he, brother? And in this day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of the darkness. And the mute shall speak in tongues known to mankind. Do you feel it, brother? Is the power of goodness about to burst through your veins? Come out of him! How long has he been that way? Since birth. Well, then it just might take a little longer. Brothers, sisters, we'll have another special meeting, same time tomorrow night. And I'll heal this man, or I'll sell my soul to the devil. Now, I'm sorry, brothers, sisters, but I feel I only had half the prayers of the audience tonight. Now, you come back here tomorrow night underneath these same stars. Can you do that? I'll have him here. And I guarantee you he'll walk out of here singing and answering your spoken questions. Now! This heretofore lame man will pass amongst you, and you give in accordance with what you've received. If you hold out your hand in a neighborly way and say, share it with me, brother, it's a beautiful day. Life is worth living, so whatever you do, let a little of that brotherly love shine through. Brotherly love, brotherly love. Bless you, brother. A dime? I gave as I received. You saw what he did tonight. And I never saw it done better. Well, you're just mad because you didn't want to come in the first place. Did you believe all that? I don't know. Sister Roger? Brother Barkley? I sincerely hope you enjoy the meeting. Well, yes, it, it was most enlightening. Can you stay for a cup of coffee? Well... It's a long way home, Mr. Love. We'd better be going. Good night. Good night.
Brother Love. May I help you, sister? The sermon was beautiful. Well, hallelujah, sister. Hoped it was. Of course, I don't understand that uh, second man not being healed. You see, it, it, it don't happen too often. Then you do have a lot of curing? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Maine to California. But you look pretty healthy to me. Oh, I am. But I have a little daughter who doesn't see. Oh. And you'd like me to pluck the scales from her eyes? Sit down, will you, sister? Well, did we sting him pretty good tonight? $22.73. Well, now, I'd expect that from the Song of Solomon and Psalms, but when I really let loose in the Book of Revelations, I expect at least twice that much. Now, who'd we really get to? Well, the Barkley girl gave $10. That woman who just left gave 5 the woman who just left is going to contribute $500. And Sister Audra just might be good for around $3,000. Now, give me $5 out of that plate. Well, what for? For the orphanage. What orphanage? The charity of Sister Audra's. You just don't go around collecting $3,000 without investing some goodwill. What about her brother? You think you can sell him, too? He looks like he could be trouble. Well, he don't worry me none. I've got an equalizer. Well, new dress? Yes. I know it's all excited. Well, it must be some dress. Not about the dress. Brother Love's going to try to help Adrian. Oh, a little girl? Mm -hmm. Well, I hope he can. How much? What do you mean? How much did he clip her for? She didn't give him any money. Well, good for her. But she's thinking about giving him $500. It's her money. Why are you so against him? Well, you saw him heal that man. I thought it was most impressive. Well, did you ever see that lame man around town before? No, but I happened to know that he heard of Brother Love's work and came here to find him. Look, sis, three years ago, a man like that wanted me to show for him. He was going to remove a scar from my face. All I had to do was put a little glue right along the cheekbone, and he was going to heal me, take it right off. Are you saying that Brother Love healed a man who wasn't even sick? Well, why don't you go back tomorrow night and see him heal another one? I don't believe it. Why don't you ask him? Good morning, Sister Audra. I was just thinking about you, Brother Love. Well, as kindly, I hope, as I have been thinking about you. That man you cured last night. You never saw him before you came to town. Sister Audra, I do believe the devil has gained your ear. Well, it's just that I've heard that uh, some traveling preachers hire... for well, they use... Shills. Shills, I believe, is the word you're searching for. Yes, yes, there are those abroad who employ that unholy practice, but, uh, well, I thought you had more faith in me. I'm disappointed. Our collection last night was less than $23. Now, would I practice fraud for such a meager amount? Would you do it for $500? Why that amount specifically? I don't know Bowles is a friend. Oh, yes. Widow with a blind child. Well, I, I did agree to try to help, but I set no sum. She happened to mention she had that amount, but it's of no concern of mine. What does pain me, though, is the fact that you so quickly mark me as a thief. A thief I am. Look at my plunder. A wagon, two dray animals, a razor, a Bible, and an extra suit of clothes. Now, if this community is of so little faith that it, it reads chicanery into my offer of help, then I assure you I shall never again see the widow nor her blind child. And I don't seek vengeance against the child. It's just that if you don't have faith in me, if these people don't have faith in me, then I can't do anything anyway. Now, just say the word. 
Say the word, Sister Audra, and I'll move on. If there's a chance for that little girl, I... I can't take the responsibility of denying it to her. If there's a chance? Do you really think there's just a chance that there's a power bigger than any mere human being? I'm sorry. I almost forgot what I came here for. Here, for the orphanage. I always give 10% of my collections to a worthwhile local cause. Now I feel even guiltier. No, no, take it. It's for the children, and the children should be happy. I know they'll appreciate it. Look, I'll, I'll be going back to the orphanage in a while. Why don't you meet me there and, and make this gift yourself? Well, that would... Uh, that would please me greatly. Go. Fine. Just fine. Oh, but you don't sound all shot up with enthusiasm. You want me to be jumping up and down? We spent the morning together. <laughs> but no three thousand dollars. Might take a little time. Time? But Mace, uh, do you get the idea that old Ben might have stepped in his own bear trap? Would be. You notice the way there's honey dripping from his eyes when he looks at it? That's enough of that. Well, you ain't getting no permanent ideas about that girl. No, oh, Ben wouldn't do that. He ain't the marrying kind. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking maybe I just should get rid of both of you. Hey. Hey, now. We is just joshing. Yeah. So don't get your back hairs up. I don't want to hear any more about that girl. All right, all, all right, anything you say, but what about the widow? Uh, $500 ain't 3000 but we could use it about now. You're right, I go and see him. as well harvest the fruit while it's ripe. Now, that's the Benny boy I've learned to love and revere. You just lay off that bottle and don't get into any trouble till I get back with the money, right? <laughs> He offered not to see Idnell again. Well, that's when you should have taken him up and sent him packing. He just might be able to help Adrian. I, I couldn't take the responsibility. Well, who am I to deny her what might be her last chance? All right, all right, you got conned. And you talked to him for two hours this morning and you got reconned. Double talked. Nick, you met him. Mm-hmm. What did you think? Oh, I... I was impressed. But then again, con men always impress me. Well, I uh, have some fence mending to do. I'll be back later. You're both impossible. I'm just trying to soften the ground, break your fall. Don't bother. She didn't need a bite. Too busy asking her advice and not taking it. <laughs> Faith does wonderful things. Through people like Brother Love. No. But is there any way we can prove it? Well, I could ride over there and ask him. <laughs>
for certain. Don't come any closer. This man's straddling a rattlesnake. Ah! Oh, you sure got your voice back in a hurry. Looks like Brother Love isn't the only one who can work miracles around here. Brother Love healed this man last night after the meeting. That's, that's right. Why didn't you jump when I fired? Well, you see, I... What do you want here? Where is Brother Love? He's on an errand. But when he gets back, I want you all out of here. Well, maybe we just don't want to leave. Well, you want to stay permanently? We have a nice, warm jail. My brother Mace, ain't he got a long nose? Oh, he sure does, Brother Flood. And what happens to long noses? They get broke. <laughs> Do you believe these? I'm not talking about that. Are you sure that Jeff Mew talked? Well, his last lines were the effect that long noses got broke, and he was almost right. Well, what are we going to do? Look, I am through doing. Now, you get in touch with your friend Idenell and tell her to keep her purse buttoned. I'll do that. Well, the love ain't gonna like it. Well, it can't be helped. When he gets back with the money, we just better forget about the meeting tonight and keep moving. Well, where is he? I want to talk to him right now. Well, who's that? So you can talk. You know who I'm talking about, Brother Love. He's on an errand, sister. To steal $500 from a friend of mine. Well, he won't get it. Where you going? Come here! Come here! Hold it! Hold it! What are you going to do with her? Well, we just keep her here till Love comes back with the money. Uh, uh, but there ain't much chance of her contributing to the building fund now. <laughs> What do you mean? Ben had eyes for her. You want to tangle with him? Oh, oh. All right. All right, what happened? Keep your hand away from your side. I don't want to see that pop-out gun. I asked you what happened. She rode into camp here. Said some bad things about you. She was going to tell that widow. She hit my gun hand. It was an accident. You can't do it, Ben. You can't. Now, look. Just give me my share of the money. I'll ride out of here. Your share of the money. I'll give you your share of a bullet. Now, you take him and you get out of here. And if I ever see either of you again, I'll kill you. Now, get out. Get up. Ben, 
Her brother's on to us. Uh, you stay around and they'll hang you. Get out. We'll, we'll get them. Get out! Come back. Why, no, I haven't seen her. Are you sure she said she was coming here? Yes, she wanted to talk to you about Brother Love. Brother Love? Victoria, for the first time in my life, I have some hope. I think he can cure Adrian. Audra does, too. Not anymore. I'm afraid Brother Love isn't all he claims to be. I'm very sorry. Did you give him any money? Yes. Yeah. We'll try to get it back for you. Are you sure that he's... Yes, he's a confidence man. I should have known that. Oh, thanks, Victoria. I'll be all right. Well, do you think she went straight to Swanson's group? I think we better find out. According to the good book, Gospel of St. Mark. According to the good book. I don't guess there's much I can tell you about the good book. You wrote it. But you got another book. You get one with my name on it. Well, I suppose you must have around a thousand pages just where I used your name in vain. And there's all the rest of it, too. So you got a score. I got a thousand dollars. That's all I got in the whole world. It's yours. If you spare this girl. It's all yours, every penny. I'll even change my ways. I'll confess everything. If you restore her sight. Oh, God, you got less reason to listen to me than anybody else in the whole world. But there's nowhere else I can go now. <laughs> I tried to out Holly. you. I can't. Right out, slick you. So I guess I think maybe it's time that you and I had a a heart to heart talk. I think that's what prayer really is, anyway. You see, if I was asking something for me, well, you could hit me with a bolt of lightning, and I'd be the last one to blame you. But I'm not. I'm asking for her, sweet, innocent girl. And she's made in the image and likeness of you. And I, I just can't picture a blind God. You know, one thing I never did lie about. I always told my flock that I was a miserable sinner. Now, you've got to have that in the book, too, right? 
Come on. Help me. Help her. Please. Arthur. Mrs. Barkley, let me explain to you. Look, I know what you're thinking, but I... Mother, I'm all right. Audra. Your face, just look at it. You can see. You prayed, you really prayed. And he heard me, he listened to me. And he just won himself the best feeling preacher this side of the big river. And I think he knew it all the time. them to spoil you for a day or so. I'm afraid they already suspect. Well, you suffered from a temporary hysterical ophthalmic malfunction. You mean temporarily blind, right? And extremely fortunate. I've known of cases where the condition lasted for months, even years, particularly with a wound such as yours. Then you might consider it a minor miracle. The words minor and miracle should never be used in the same sentence. I'll remember that. Well, come by my office in a couple of days. May I come in? I think she's been expecting you, but don't stay too long. Audra, how radiant you look. Thank you. Doctor says I'm fine. Oh, thank God. And I mean that. It's very funny. Yesterday it would have taken me about five minutes to say that. A lie takes an awful lot of words. The truth takes very few. How about you? Well, I had a little meeting with the sheriff. I don't think I gained the convert, but he's not going to press charges. But then you'll be moving on. Yes. When I'm coming back, I want to build a church in Swanson's Grove. I made a promise. And I have an awful lot to make up for. How big a church? Oh, I'd say about 20 cubits by 30 cubits. Audra, how big is a cubit? I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah, sister. Hallelujah, brother.